Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, by popular demand, we are revisiting the AMD driver situation. We've had lots of requests and comments asking us to look into this further. Many of you wanted an updated poll as well, so yeah, let's do it. Let's discuss how AMD's graphics card drivers are stacking up today after some of the latest updates. Before that though, let's do a brief recap of the situation for people that haven't been following it closely. Since the launch of AMD's Navi GPUs back in July of last year, many Radeon owners have been suffering from a variety variety of driver bugs and issues, particularly those who went and bought AMD's RX 5700 series cards. Some of the big complaints have surrounded the dreaded black screen bug, which were acknowledged by AMD in the known issues section of their driver release notes several versions ago, and there's been a smattering of other issues like crashes and so on. It's been difficult to pinpoint exactly when these issues began. Some people had problems as early as the launch of the Radeon RX 5700 and 5700 XT. Others started to see issues after AMD's major driver update at the end of 2019, the Radeon Software Adrenaline 2020 Edition update, still a mouthful that one. And while Navi GPUs did seem to be worst affected, owners of other Radeon GPUs like the Radeon 7 and Vega series also occasionally reported similar issues. Again, like we've been saying right from the start, neither Steve or myself have run into any of the major issues people have been seeing, no black screens or anything like that, and Steve has mentioned before how he uses several Navi GPUs in daily driver systems. We've also found it very difficult to replicate or trigger these bugs on our system, something AMD has been struggling with as well, which has impacted their ability to address the problems quickly. Everything really came to a head when Steve was preparing a GPU comparison between the recently released RX 5600 XT and NVIDIA's RTX 2060. Both GPUs ended up delivering similar performance for a similar price, so yeah, he started to look into other areas to make a call on which GPU to buy. After hearing about the driver issues for a while, which might impact our ability to recommend the Radeon option, we wanted to get a good grasp on just how many people were affected by the issues, so we ran a poll, and wow, the results were not good for AMD. We asked people if they had experienced any driver issues, serious driver issues, with their current GPU, and after 64,000 votes, 48% of AMD GPU owners said yes, they had experienced issues. This was in stark contrast to the NVIDIA numbers, where just 22% of voters said they had issues with their cards. And these numbers will be super important as we talk about the latest drivers and the improvements made there. We talked about a number of other things in our initial video, talked to some retailers and AMD themselves, but eventually came to the conclusion that it would be hard to recommend AMD GPUs at a similar price to performance ratio to Nvidia GPUs when these driver issues were so widespread, and that's pretty much where we ended that video. Over the last three weeks, we've been closely monitoring the situation and even ran a few follow-up polls to dig further into the problems. One concerning number for AMD was from this poll, which highlighted that of those with AMD GPUs, 9% of people responding to our poll replaced their AMD GPU with an NVIDIA GPU due to driver issues. This is a theme we heard about a lot in the comments on our original video and in our poll. People who had bought an RX 5700 XT and were experiencing deal-breaking bugs like black screens were often returning or exchanging these cards for an NVIDIA option like the RTX 2070 Super. Now granted, this hasn't been a huge number of people, but any issues that directly cause people to swap their GPU out for a competitor's product that's not related to performance at least is pretty concerning. Specifically on Navi graphics cards, we ran a poll asking how many Navi owners were experiencing issues with the latest drivers as of one week ago, so before this latest major update. Naturally, of the 47,000 people responding to the poll, many didn't own a Navi GPU, but of those that did, 43% of people said with the latest drivers, they had some form of issue, with more than half of those people claiming their issues were major issues. It's also worth pointing out that 39% of people polled said they never had issues, and 17% said a recent driver update addressed their problems. But even with some progress in the latest driver releases, it was still concerning to us that more than 40% of Navi owners were experiencing issues with the absolute latest driver update available at the time, several months after the cards went on sale. Again, all the usual caveats apply to these sorts of polls. They're not super scientific, but they still have a significant sample size of tens of thousands of votes. 
Probably a few troll votes in there, but the general experience of users seemed pretty clear from the results and comments we were receiving. AMD's driver stability, as of a few weeks ago, was not great. About a week after we ran these polls, and a bit under three weeks since our first video, AMD published a major GPU driver update that aimed to address most of the issues people were experiencing. The full name of this driver update, again, bit of a mouthful, Radeon Software Adrenaline 2020 Edition 20.2.2, but it is an important one. AMD told us they expected the driver to solve 90 plus percent of the problems people were seeing, and this is basically why we're back to revisit the topic. Does the 20.2.2 driver update actually solve the problems people were having? First, let's check what AMD is saying in the driver notes. I'm not going to read through every single thing in this massive list of fixed issues, but no less than five of the dot points listed reference black screens. Several others reference fixes to system hangs, and many others talk about crashes and other bugs in a variety of games and other situations. So when this driver update came out several days ago, this list of fixes seemed very promising. Of course, there are still some known issues, and AMD acknowledges that while the 20.2.2 driver does fix many black screen bugs, some users may still experience black screens or system hang issues during extended periods of gameplay, which they are continuing to monitor. But overall, it seems many problems have been addressed. But what are the users saying? Well, the first port of call for anything like this is Reddit, a place AMD keeps a close eye on, and yeah, we like to check in there every now and again too. What caught our eye immediately were the responses to the 20.2.2 driver release notes on r slash AMD. This is a very long thread with over 1,000 comments, but the majority of people responding seem to suggest their problems were resolved in one way or another. Lots of very excited people in there saying their black screen issues were fixed and games are playable now. The next step for us was to ask you guys via a poll you know, we've been running a few of those lately. We promise we'll calm it down a bit, but I think this latest one is pretty important. So we asked Navi owners in particular whether the latest 20.2.2 drivers have resolved their issues, and these were the results. Again, lots of NVIDIA GPU owners and older AMD GPU owners, which we can ignore for now, but we did get a lot of Navi owners responding. They made up about 20% of the 24,000 votes we received as of making this video. The very promising sign for AMD is the amount of people responding that yes, their issues have been fixed as of this latest driver. 45% of Navi owners said this was the case, with a further 35% saying they had no issues to begin with. This means that as of this driver release, 80% of poll respondents said they don't have issues with their Navi GPU, leaving around 20% of people with issues. The comments, as expected, are a range of experiences. Lots of people telling us they never had problems with previous generation AMD GPUs, a few people saying they still have problems with their Navi cards, and of course, many reports of improvements for Navi owners. But the difference between this latest driver release and previous releases in our polls is pretty stark. Across our two polls pre-driver version 20.2.2, over 40% of Navi owners were experiencing issues. But since the driver update, that number has been cut in half, which indicates that yes, AMD has made significant strides in driver stability with this latest update. Again, not something we've been able to test ourselves as we've never been able to replicate the issues, but the community response here has been very positive. Now, some people are probably thinking, well, 20% of users still reporting problems is a bit concerning. But if we look back at our original poll on driver problems, 22% of NVIDIA owners said they had experienced driver issues with their card in its lifetime. Yes, different phrasing of the question here, so not a true apples to apples comparison, but it does appear the bug rates with AMD's latest drivers are more in line with NVIDIA's numbers than they were previously. With significant progress being made with the 20.2.2 driver and many more happy Navi customers, I wanted to get a bit more information from AMD on why these issues were occurring, how they managed to solve them, and what we can expect from them going forward. Because I'm sure AMD owners out there will be concerned that AMD's driver stability may slip backwards with future updates, or we may see the same problems crop up with the next GPU product launch. So on the causes for the problems, AMD didn't go into any specifics other than saying the issues were not widespread and not specific to Navi GPUs. In fact, AMD said that most of the issues we resolved were applied to all our supported GPUs. So it's interesting to me that while Navi GPU owners seem to be reporting these issues in public most often, AMD believe it wasn't a specific issue with their Navi cards causing the problems. 
The key for me was AMD's answer to how they are improving their driver development to ensure these issues don't appear in the future. AMD told me they have improved four areas of the process, which are as follows. Increased user engagement. This means the team have expanded how they monitor online communities, including Reddit and their support forums. AMD say they want to ensure we are more responsive to user concerns and can act on high impact issues as soon as reported. They've also expanded their Vanguard program, which is essentially a user-driven program where you can sign up and beta test AMD drivers on your real-world system. AMD are growing the number of Vanguard testers and are encouraging people to sign up. It'll help them nail down any issues earlier and in more detail. I'll put a link to their Vanguard website below if you're interested in joining. AMD are also expanding the number of games they are testing for bugs. Of course, you can't test every game when you update a driver. There are so many PC games these days. But AMD say, we're adding more titles to the extensive library of games we test with every Radeon software release to better encompass the ever-growing collection of games our large user base is playing. And finally, AMD are expanding their testing by developing new automated testing procedures based on AI technologies. This should allow them to test a much broader selection of use case scenarios. Speaking with AMD, it really does sound like the driver team worked incredibly hard over the last month or so to correct these problems, working long hours around the clock to deliver this driver update. And part of that has been expanding these programs and improving their test methods so they have the tools in place to catch problems earlier in the development process. I also asked AMD whether they advise using DDU to remove previous driver installations when slotting a new AMD GPU into their system. AMD's official response is that when switching between GPUs from different vendors, it is a good idea to run a third-party utility to remove traces of the previous vendor's software and eliminate possible interference, but it is not mandatory to do so. However, when upgrading from an AMD GPU to another AMD GPU, they advise to use the factory reset feature in their driver installer instead. AMD also mentioned several times how the community really helped uncover these issues and nail down the root causes. AMD says stability is an absolute non-negotiable with their drivers and they haven't diverted resources away from stability to develop new features. But with these issues in particular, it was hard to reproduce them given such a wide range of user configurations. But the community helped them out with this one and they say the best place to report issues in the future is via amd.com slash report although they do monitor places like Reddit and other forums. The final thing I asked is how OEMs and board partners have responded to the driver problems and whether they experienced higher RMA rates because of it. AMD said that based on the latest AMD data, we are not seeing a higher than usual number of RMAs, so that's that, I guess. I think the key takeaway out of all of this is that Things are certainly better on the AMD driver front now with version 20.2.2 than they were several weeks and months ago. Now I'm hesitant to say the problems are fixed because even AMD themselves admit some bugs may still be present due to such a wide variety of configurations and the difficulty in replicating these problems. But this latest driver update is a huge step in the right direction and brings back some confidence in the Red Team's driver development abilities. Of course, this is something we'll continue to monitor as more people update their drivers and future drivers get released, but it sounds like AMD have internally made a lot of improvements to how they handle drivers that will hopefully stop the issues cropping up again. Pretty frustrating that it took seven months and it blowing up in the media to get to this point. That's definitely disappointing for customers and even driven people away from AMD products, but the situation sounds a lot better and more promising for the future. For us, of course, understanding the driver issues and how widespread they are helps inform our product recommendations. We talk a lot about which GPU to buy on Hardware Unbox, so across the last few months, we've really wanted to track the AMD's driver situation closely and truly see how widespread the problems are. After the 20.2.2 drivers, I think we're more comfortable recommending Radeon products than we were previously, although as I said, we'll continue to look into this just to make sure the issues don't crop up again. If you are a buyer holding off on a GPU purchase to see how this AMD driver situation pans out, now is probably a better time to buy a Navi GPU than any of the prior months, but I'd also understand if you're still a bit hesitant as this driver update is very fresh. Make sure to run DDU if you are changing over from Nvidia to AMD though, even AMD says that's a good idea.
And that's it for this follow-up into the AMD GPU driver situation. Hopefully this has provided a bit more information on the current situation with these latest drivers, some of the things we're hearing from the community, some of the numbers we're seeing, and also those responses from AMD have also provided a bit more context into what is going on internally with them uh, to make sure that these problems don't crop up again. As I said, hopefully all this information does make it a bit easier for you to decide which GPU brand to go with if you are deciding on an upgrade, whether to go Radeon or GeForce. Still a bit of a developing story, I know, but I think it will be improving over time and certainly there's been a lot of promising things happen as I've been just talking about. So pretty much that's it for this one. You can subscribe for more Hardware Unbox news coverage. News Corner will be going up on the channel tomorrow as normal, so stay tuned for that one. You can you know, follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, we're also on Facebook, so we don't normally talk about that stuff, so go follow us on places like that where we do update you on things from time to time. We've also got our Patreon page and merch store. Links are in the description below, and I'll catch you in the next one.